We absolutely don't need any more big, expensive, pointless toys for rich people. And when it comes to new technologies like eVTOL and drones, it's easy to think that might be all they're good for. After all, developing new technology is expensive and we've survived pretty well without flying around cities to date. So how should these be used? Why do we need to fly around cities now? And what are some of the use cases that could really, really start to benefit people's lives in a very near-term future? Well, to answer that billion dollar question, we've come here to a car park in Coventry, the transport capital of the UK, to visit the world's first urban vertiport. And this is the Fully Charged Show. Urban Airport is a company that designs, develops, manufactures and operates aviation infrastructure for eVTOLs. So electric vertical takeoff and landing passenger air taxis like the one behind us, uh, but also for smaller eVTOLs and also for drones. And we've had actually over the last three weeks, 20 different types of drones um, taking off and landing uh, from the urban airport. And we haven't had a passenger air taxi take off yet because they're all busy trying to get them certified. But ultimately, urban airport will be an agnostic piece of infrastructure where we can service these vehicles, we can let them take off and land safely, we can process the passengers who aboard them, we can process the cargo, and both of those we can process safely and securely. And the unique part of Urban Airport is our integrated patented technology where we let the vehicle take off from an elevated flight deck. So right now we're sitting at the hangar deck position and that's where passengers and cargo can be loaded and unloaded safely and securely, where the EV tolls can be charged, maintained, repaired and fixed. We hear a lot about seamless mobility, the idea that you can very elegantly transfer from one transport mode to another and, and travel very easily from A to B with as minimal brain power as possible. And when it comes to new types of mobility, that's even more important so that they do become a part of our everyday lives. So we're going to walk through this vertical and see what that seamless process looks like. So we've walked into the reception area and as you can see, I can order my coffee. I can then start to relax a little bit, maybe before my flight. And if we come this way, we can start to go and see security. It looks quite a lot like a normal security, apart from it's incredibly small. One of the things that you can't see is that actually you would need to be weighed. And that's because weight is really, really important when it comes to eVTOL because it will have an impact on the power and the range and all those sorts of things. So if you were a person who wanted to fly via an eVTOL, it literally would be as simple as that. Come in, maybe have a coffee, go through security, very short walk to the platform to take off, and that is it. But of course, there are loads and loads of things going on behind the scenes. So through here, through here, we have the command control center, and that's a number of different things. Firstly, we have the air traffic control, so we can see what's going on in the other airspace as well, as well as what's going on for drones and eVTOL. There are the buttons which lift the platform so that drones and eVTOL can take off at sort of a slightly higher level and then come back down to ground level to, to board. And here, we've got a number of things, CCTV, cybersecurity, and also working with the emergency services as well. You'll notice that this is quite an empty space, so it's super flexible and can adapt and modify depending on what this space needs to be used for and who the customers are. Behind me there is a prototype of an eVTOL, an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. I think this one is capable of taking four to six people. and is actually made by Hyundai um, via their urban air mobility arm called Supernal. And it's here to show you that actually you could have one parked here, you could charge it up, can transport out onto the platform, taken up to the roof and where it can take off. And actually you can have multiple versions of these of different sizes here within this vertical space.
We think that an infrastructure like this could be used across the world because it's a global business. So we think that the needs are very different in different parts of the world for humanitarian aid and disaster relief. Some more conventional areas that cut across from the developing world to the developed include things like uh, transportation of medical supplies. So we're seeing that in parts of the uh, parts of the UK and America. What benefit do you get from having a drone or eVTOL infrastructure above and beyond travelling by road or transporting things like medical supplies by road. We're building our infrastructure with net zero in mind and with resilience architecture so that we can serve communities to move people from A to B but also to operate in conditions that we probably don't want to think about in the future. So moving people sustainably from A to B, moving things sustainably from A to B, using different types of resilient infrastructure and presumably in places where actually road may not exist or rail infrastructure may not exist and providing ways to move in those remote areas or underserved areas. In Africa there are areas that don't have postal addresses so there's no way of getting items to them. Even in parts of the uh, Middle East you've got the same. So we're able to geolocate with our partner what three words to one meter square and we're able to get parcels directly to destinations which so we're overcoming problems along the way that are uh, existing within systems. And so a big part of this as well is that this can be deployed very very quickly. This is actually a temporary piece of infrastructure and you, and you mentioned earlier that one of the use cases is that uh, providing relief in situations like floods how quickly could this be set up and start delivering aid to areas in need? So the versions that we're building are much lighter than this, very quickly deployable within cargo containers. We think we put them up in days, if not a week. The urban airport here is a real demonstrator. It's, it's showing what this infrastructure could look like. And as such, it's showing a range of different applications and a range of different ways this could be used. So we've seen how it could be used for passengers, seen how it could be used for sort of cyber security, and also actually how it could be used for logistics. Um, so you can imagine that you could have a multiple sort of logistics sorting center and use this as a part of, of last mile deliveries. This could be something like here in Coventry for deliveries, or it could be something in a much more remote location where you're delivering things like medical supplies, for example. We've had interest from farmers that are in uh, far out regions from cities that want to move their cash crops and their agro produce into cities where they can get higher prices. This is not for rich people, this is for everybody. The model works when everybody can access this site. And there are concerns that you know, you've got something in the sky, something could fall on your head or that you're being spied upon or that they are noisy. How should some of those things be addressed and, and how can people like Urban Airport work with the public to, to understand some of those challenges? Privacy, rights, regulations all need to, to, to be updated to reflect that. I'm a big believer in privacy, people's privacy. I support that. I also understand the general data protection regulations and all the other things around that. I think we need to work within the system that's appropriate. What makes you personally excited about working with Urban Airport and working on this type of infrastructure? The energy and the team. Um, so in 11 months we went from concept to uh, specification design and in 11 weeks after that we built this infrastructure. That was through the middle of a pandemic. We met face to face twice. Uh, everything else was on, on uh, video calls and um, we built this in 11 weeks. We think we could build the next one in about six or seven weeks. So we've learned a lot just from this first build. That's actually a really critical point. If you have more access to more things, more jobs, more food, more whatever it might be, that's an incredibly positive thing for economies. Flying things from A to B, that's a huge part of that. Yeah, and don't forget, people want to get from A to B as quickly as possible. And so the, the flight capabilities are awesome. We think that the sort of drones that we've got on show here could, uh, when they're allowed to fly, could move from Coventry to London, uh, people in about 20 to 30 minutes.
That's incredible. Lots of new technologies can seem niche until suddenly they're not. Cast your mind back to 2000 and I think there would have been very few people who would have thought it necessary to carry an encyclopedia in your pocket at all times. And yet today, that's what a lot of us have in the form of our smartphones. New technologies can seem completely unnecessary until suddenly they're integrated into our lives and set new status quos. And I think eVTOL sits firmly in that camp. It takes a little bit of imagination and possibly to some scepticism to find out just how transformative this will be. But whilst we're mulling over that conundrum and thinking about how this is going to impact cities like Coventry, it's great to hear about the use cases that can start to impact people's lives for the better today by implementing eVTOL and its supporting infrastructure in really affordable and really flexible ways. In many situations, there are places where there isn't the luxury of rail and road infrastructure. And so when help is needed, it's amazing to see that eVTOL could be deployed really quickly and really rapidly and really sustainably. And that, in my mind, is truly game-changing. Our management goal is to have 200 urban airports operational around the world uh, in the next five years. Um, this one uh, is our prototype one. We have a lot of improvements now that we know what we want to do with it. But the key part of urban airport is the patented technology that enables a very, very compact, and we call an ultra compact aviation infrastructure, but one, is, um, but one that is of high capacity. And so, Ultra compact means we can be in high value areas like downtown Coventry city center. We're 60 seconds away from the mainline railway station. We're 60 seconds away from Coventry Cathedral and the city center. I foresee in 20, 30 years, you know, hundreds of urban airports in our cities. And that I think will then lead to greater, not only productivity, because we're saving time as we're moving, we're kind of, we're easing our, uh, our streets from congestion. We're helping clean the air by taking some vehicles off the road. Advanced air mobility won't replace any existing form of transport. It'll be another layer of mobility, which is going to be important as cities grow. Some flying taxis or flying cars may end up in the hands of wealthy individuals. But there is so much more that eVTOL and drones could do, from delivering medical aid, reducing congestion, disaster relief, or changing our perception of distances and the places that we can live as a result. And that is truly exciting. And coming here today, I think we've been given a glimpse into that future and seeing how this might unfold. Please do like and comment and subscribe and do all of the things that you can see below you on the screen because it really, really does help the channel and it helps us continue coming to these incredible, incredible places. Or you could even support us on Patreon. So if you have been, thanks for watching. Well, if you enjoyed that episode, you're going to love this one. And this one, too, is very relevant to the topic. And also, if you want to subscribe to Fully Charged, which is a wonderful thing to do, really helps us, costs you nothing, you just click up there. It's really simple. And if you do want to support us a little bit more, you can have a look at the Patreon link. That's up there. Thank you.